Hello, welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about a relatively new stablecoin project that has been more volatile than Bitcoin, ironically. It's called Ampleforth and pro fortunes have been made and lost over the past month in this coin and it's actually got a really, really interesting history behind it and an interesting way that it works. So let's get stuck in to WTF is Ampleforth. Before we get stuck into Ampleforth, it's important that we have a look at who the founder was, an American entrepreneur by the name of Evan Kuo. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He started a business named Pythagoras Pizza in about 2015, 2016, and the business received a lot of hype in September of 2017. The reason is Evan had announced the business was going to be tokenized, which to be honest was fairly common in 2017, especially late 2017, which is when this happened. Basically the idea was that the business was going to offer fragments of the business's equity to staff, drivers, um, you know, affiliate marketers and customers. And funnily enough, the name of this token was Fragments. And they said it was going to be basically the, the token for the gig economy. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out too well. At this point, the website getpi.io no longer functions. Their Instagram is on private. Their Twitter, at getpiepizza, is suspended. And I'm going to assume that they're no longer delivering pizza as there have been no reviews since late 2017. And any reviews from late 2017 is in December 2017, January 2018, have been complaining about how they put in orders but didn't receive pizza. This is probably a good thing as the initial token idea would have been classified as a security. And it mean they would have had to have gone through miles of red tape to ever get this thing off the ground. However, the story doesn't end there as the fragment tokens, I think, and I'm not 100% sure, but based on what the news I've read had already been distributed and there'd already been investors behind it. So there was an article written by Coindesk in March of 2018 that talked about the team pivoting the idea of fragments to be a centralized or sorry, a decentralized token that would solve the problem of trading into and out of government backed currencies. So basically saying we need something stable to trade fiat against. And we can already see the initial, this is where we see the initial rumblings of Ampleforth coming into creation. Over a year later, uh, in May 2019, the Ampleforth white paper was released. The abstract of the white paper basically said that Ampleforth is designed to solve the problem of needing a th synthetic commodity that will have low correlation to Bitcoin and other traditional assets, i.e. a stablecoin. However, the unique selling proposition is this stablecoin relies on supply manipulation to achieve stability. So let's go over that quickly. So what Ample aims to be is a consistently valued token that is differentiated from other USD backed stablecoins. So it's interesting to note that Ample is actually based on a specific asset at a specific time. That being a US dollar valued at a, as it was valued in I think June of 2019. So in order to work out what the, the I guess the target price of Ample is, you basically look at what the US dollar is based at now and add on any inflation that has incurred since June 2019. So for example, the target price of Ample at the moment is about 1.011 US dollars. So one US dollar in a cent, basically, which is the amount of inflation that the actual US dollar has sort of you know accumulated over the last 12 months, according to the Ample protocol. You can find this information and a lot more about Ample using their dashboard. It actually contains a lot of the live data about what the token uh, protocol has been doing. So the protocol is forever chasing this target price. And what it does is it manipulates the supply of the token as the actual price of the asset moves above and below its, its target price. If the price of Ampleforth is over 5% higher than the target price, the protocol increases supply to all token holders as a percentage of their holdings. If it dips below 5% of the token price, the protocol removes supply at the same ratio. This process is called rebasing. So 
For example, and this is oversimplified for time, if Ampleforth is, say, at about $1.51, the protocol will increase supply to all holding wallets by 50%, meaning that if I held 100 Ample tokens after a positive rebase, I will have 150 tokens. On the flip side, if the price goes down to, say, 51 cents, the protocol will cut the holdings in all wallets by 50% and negative rebase. So it's interesting to note that hypothetically, if I owned 100 tokens and that made up 1% of total supply, whether I'm going through a positive or a negative rebase, I will continue to own 1% of the ample supply. So, you know, my 100 tokens goes to 150. Basically, everyone else who owns Ample tokens will get the same 50% increase. So in my case, an extra 50 tokens, but I'll still only hold, still maintain my 1% holding. If you want to do more reading on this, Ample actually has a really well put together short course on trying to understand how the technology and the economics of this works. And I'll put the description down below. So before even completing their white paper, Ampleforth had completed two ICOs. Now I'm going to assume that the first one, which was in March of 2018, which is when Fragments existed, was that ICO. Uh, it was for about 3 million US dollars, uh, which roughly works out to be buying tokens at about 32 cents. So I'm assuming that these are guys who got in early before there was even an Ampleforth white paper. The second ICO occurred at the end of 2018, and it was for 1.75 million, those investors bought in at about $1.06. So quite interesting, I'm not sure how that worked. Then there was an IEO on Bitfinex in June of 2019, which sold out in 11 seconds for about $4.9 million. So people are buying in at about 98 cents. Why did they need about 10 million US dollars for this project? I'm not too sure. And the other thing is for the IEO for a supply token, like as in a, something that's meant to be used as a, a stable token um, that isn't backed really by anything, they only sold 10% of supply to the public. So it's a bit of an interesting one, if you ask me. So before trading, the project had 50 million tokens on issue and was basically meant to be worth a dollar. So it's basically about a $50 million market cap on this thing. However, it was quite interesting because the project listed at $2 on Bitfinex the day that it started trading, which quickly saw some positive rebasing take place. So it means that the people that owned Ampleforth tokens were seeing their tokens increase every day because the price was over a dollar. And the supply got up to about 72 million tokens, which is a nice 44% odd gain. Now, by the time that the token supply had hit that 70 million odd figure, the price had already dipped down to a dollar, which is still a good return if you managed to sell at the time. However, the token spent a significant amount of time after that under one dollar. And we saw the token supply between September 2019 and December 2019 drop as low as about 7.9 million tokens, which from you know 72 million is roughly about a 90% drop. The price hit a low in December on some exchanges down to about 22 cents, which is why we see this extreme negative rebasing. So it means just so I can point out again, it meant that if you held ample tokens in your wallet, that they were disappearing without you selling them, which is an interesting, interesting way that this protocol works. So you would have had to have, have had pretty strong hands to keep holding. Also trading volume over this time was abysmal. Basically, it was about a few thousand bucks down to as low as $400 per day. The price managed to stabilize uh, around that sort of magical $1 mark uh, between December and June, and supply was quite happily averaged at about 20 million tokens. So how did they turn that around and then sort of put the token in the state that we saw about a month ago? Well, I personally believe it was the concept of the geyser. The geyser was originally announced in April of 2020, and we'll talk a little bit about what that is right now. So simply put, the Geyser is a liquidity incentivization program that encourages users to put their funds into the Uniswap liquidity pool, and then the longer they held them there, they received an additional rewards multiplier that increased every day you kept your liquidity in the Geyser. 
Meaning that this, simply put, is similar to what I talked about in my Aleph video, where if you put, you stake your tokens with the Ethereum uh, in, in Uniswap, you receive bonus tokens every day. The big difference here, and this is oversimplified, but the big difference is that you've got this daily reward multiplier. So every day, you would get a reward multiplier that would go from 1% to 1.5% to 2% to 3%, and that would increase every day. So that means that they were incentivizing you to hold it in there for longer, as opposed to just willy-nilly taking it in and out, depending on the what was happening in the market. So when it was announced, there was basically next to no price action, no increase in trading volume, nothing really too exciting of note. However, the day before the guys that was meant to release, the price of Ampleforth went apeshit. It pushed from about 98 cents to $3 in a matter of days. And at the same time as this happened, because of our magical friend, positive rebasing, supply went from 18 to 27 million, which gave Ample a market cap of about 69 million. Not too bad, that's a reasonable gain for what was happening at the time. The price topped out a few days later at $4 on the 12th of July, with supply tipping 114 million tokens and giving Ample a market cap of 428 million. Meaning that if you had bought around $1 on the 24th of June, you would have had the joy of a 4x in price rise and your tokens would have gone up 6x meaning that you basically turned $1,000 into $24,000 in two weeks. Now, those kind of returns aren't really great kept secrets. So we saw more money flood into the market at this point. And because Ample was so high, I mean, $4, which is four times the target price, we saw this huge amount of positive rebasing. So supply is flooding into the market. So even though the price actually continued to decline for the next 18 days, supply was increasing the whole time. It's actually interesting that the top of the market cap happens um, on the 28th of July when the price was only $2. However, the market cap at the time was $1.6 billion because of the ridiculous amount of supply that had basically been created. So with all this money being made and thousands of people flocking into the, to the hype train, the smartest guys in the room, conspiracy theories aside, dumped on the market and the price slid down to about 61 cents, briefly. Since then, it's sort of had a bit of a run up to about $1.20 and then it's been quite happily sitting under a dollar, bouncing between 60 to 80 cents. So where to from here? The biggest issue with Ampleforth is the ridiculous amount of supply. At the moment, there's about 650 million tokens still out there, when the average amount of tokens over its life is 50 million, meaning that we've got to see some serious negative rebasing to put that back into what we would consider a decent equilibrium, in my opinion. What's also interesting to look at is how quickly supply was created. In a period of only 37 days, supply went from about 20 odd million to over 700 million. That's the craziness of positive rebasing. However, negative rebasing takes a significantly longer time. I don't really see a point for holders to keep holding this investment. At the end of the day, the longer that it stays under a dollar, you're basically going to be dripping away, you know, the tokens in your wallet because of negative rebasing. So, you know, today you might have 100, tomorrow you might have 95, the day after 90. And every day that drip gets taken away until we reach that magical dollar. So for a potential 30% upswing, so potential 30% gain to say go from 70 cents back to a dollar, every day you're just risking money leaving your wallet. Even if it goes to 80 cents, you're still losing. It's, it's a really, really hard one for me to, to understand why people would still be holding. If you've got a good reason, just let me know down below. Another issue for me is that 57% of the token supply is still being held by the top five holders of this token. So a lot of those would be, uh, the top four are held by Ample, 20% of all supplies held by the Ample Treasury. Uh, then they've got their ecosystem fund, their team fund, and then there's obviously a few investors sprinkled in there as well. One investor, I should say. So with, with a basically a stable token that's designed to be used by people, it is a big problem when the team owns, well, the founding team and investors own close to 60% of all available supply. Now, to put that into perspective, that's somewhere in the realm of about $300 million. 
So quite a cool earn for these guys over the past few years. So for me personally, and this is not investment advice because I'm just some random dude on YouTube to most of you, but I mean, I have three main issues with people who would like to invest in this thing. Three main things that you should think of. Number one, it's a stable coin. So it's designed to sit around a dollar. Although this one is a bit more interesting than others because of positive rebasing, we're still in this experimental phase where we don't really know how this whole thing's gonna play out. And I think that there are better opportunities to be made in this market at the moment. Just my opinion. Second, there is a ridiculous amount of supply out there at the moment. So we've had this period of insane positive rebasing and we need to see that counterbalanced on the other side by a period of negative rebasing, which means if you hold these, that you're basically gonna be dripping them out of your wallet while the, the price still stays under a dollar. So I really don't see there's like a lot of upside in holding this. Third, like I said, founding team and initial investors hold the vast majority of supply. So when they decide they wanna start cashing out, a lot of those dates line up to be September and December of this year. If they end up starting to move money out of their wallets, basically there just isn't a market there to absorb it. Thank you for going on this journey with me with Ampleforth. And if you have any questions or anything like that, please remember to comment below. And if you'd like me to cover any other projects, do a deep dive like this, just let me know as well. Thanks so much guys, I'll speak to you soon.